Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Today's video is based on a viewer question from HH. Would you possibly do a video about emetophobia and how it correlates with agoraphobia? I've had this issue for years and I've tried several meds and therapies, but I still struggle to leave my house due to fear of vomiting. I am also afraid of the general act of vomiting even at home. It affects my daily life, how I eat, what I eat, where I go, etc. Thanks, HH, for your question. Emetophobia is the fear of vomiting or seeing someone else vomit. It falls under the category of specific phobias in the diagnostic manual. Specific phobias are the most common anxiety disorder people have. 18% of people will develop a phobia at some point in their life. Having a fear is not the same as having a phobia. Many people fear heights, snakes, and even vomit. No one wants to feel sick or look at vomit. But what takes an ordinary fear and converts it from an aversion to a phobia is the severity of the anxiety reaction that you have and the avoidance behaviors that you engage in to reinforce the fear. Some people will have full-on panic attacks when they encounter the object or situation, or they can have an intense panic attack from just thinking about it. People experience panic attacks differently but a typical panic attack could be trouble breathing, a racing heart, feeling faint, intense nausea, or feeling out of body, just to name a few symptoms. Most phobias like heights and enclosed spaces are driven by fear, but another very strong emotion behind the phobias is disgust. Disgust is a complex emotion because it's not as easy to see and measure like fear or, and anger. Also, what people find disgusting varies by culture. And lastly, disgust is a multidimensional concept. You can be disgusted by things on a sensory level, like things that are a visual turnoff, smell bad, taste bad, but there's also a moral component to it, like being disgusted by certain attitudes or behaviors. Self-disgust has been studied as a basis for suicidal thinking. Disgust really deserves its own video because it's a really big topic, but for today's purpose, disgust proneness or how easily you are to be disgusted by things is seen as a root cause of certain phobias like emetophobia and some types of obsessive compulsive disorder. I say some types because not everyone with OCD has obsessions about contamination. With emetophobia, you start with a fear or disgust over the experience or sight of vomiting. Then you have avoidance and safety behaviors that keep the phobia active. I talk about safety behaviors in this video. Safety behaviors are things that you do to keep yourself from encountering the feared object or situation. Emetophobics use safety behaviors to avoid any situation that they think may cause them to vomit or see vomit. And some examples are avoiding parties where people are drinking. Usually you have to party pretty hard to vomit from drinking. And that kind of outing with free-flowing hard alcohol is different from a cocktail hour where everyone's in business suits and limited to one or two drinks. But an, an emetophobic person will avoid any outing that has any kind of alcohol on the remote possibility that someone may throw up. They may avoid traveling abroad, or women may not want to get pregnant because they don't want to have morning sickness or deal with a sick child. And by the way, it's fairly common for people with contamination fears or emetophobia to be able to tolerate these exposures when you're caring for your child. It's like your brain grants you an exception and allows you to do what you need to do. Why? I don't know. This isn't well studied, but if I had to guess, I would say it has something to do with oxytocin. Oxytocin is called the love hormone or bonding hormone. Mothers get a triple dose of it and it gives you an intense desire to nurture and protect your offspring. And it's because of oxytocin that you see animals nursing the young of other species. There's a popular video on YouTube showing a cat nursing ducklings. Cats normally kill birds, but this cat had just given birth and had a surge of oxytocin. I think that's fascinating, but I digress. The point is, there's hope for the emetophobic person to be able to take care of a vomiting baby. Sometimes the avoidance behaviors can become compulsive, similar to OCD, 
It so happens that many people with emetophobia also have OCD. An example of how this looks is you may develop a ritual of checking expiration dates or smelling food to, to check to make sure that it's safe to eat. Without OCD, you may only check once, but with OCD, you need to check multiple times to relieve your anxiety. Some people will throw away food that may have stood next to an item that was expired. They know that the container of orange juice can't be contaminated from the milk carton that's one day past due. They know that logically, but their anxiety and OCD makes them need to get rid of everything in the vicinity of an expired item because that makes them feel reassured that they've eliminated all possibilities of eating something that could make them vomit. And this measure of getting rid of everything is a safety behavior. This food avoidance can get really serious and lead to malnutrition. Some people have been hospitalized with dehydration because of emetophobia. A lesser extreme is a person who avoids eating fresh or raw foods and limits their diet to packaged goods. All of that processed food is unhealthy because processed food is low in essential nutrients like magnesium. I talk about magnesium and its role in anxiety in this video. If you have co-occurring OCD, not only do you have rituals, but you can be consumed with thoughts all day about what will and won't make you feel sick. It's like every thought and behavior is guided by your fear and those thoughts control how you go about your day. You can have intrusive thoughts that pop into your head, like what if the UPS delivery person had been sick and they touched the package that, they, that my partner brought into the house? I didn't go near it, but my partner did, and they can get sick, so I need my partner to quarantine for a couple of days to make sure that they don't get sick. HH asked about how emetophobia relates to agoraphobia. Agoraphobia is a separate anxiety disorder where you fear being in a place where you can't escape if you become anxious. It's commonly seen with people who have panic attacks, but this can happen also with people who have emetophobia. Some will get to the point where they can't leave their home at all because of fear that they'll vomit in public or have the need to vomit and not be able to get to a safe place. Unfortunately, nausea is a symptom of anxiety, so your mind can fool you into thinking that because you're nauseous, Vomiting is imminent, so you must stay put. What can you do about this? The most robust treatment is cognitive behavior therapy. Your therapist can use cognitive therapy to help you recognize and change your distorted thinking and use exposure therapy for the behaviors. And there's different kinds of exposure therapy and your therapist could design the best program for you. The cognitive part of the therapy will focus on your sensitivity to body sensations. It's about breaking the thought loops that you have about these, what these sensations mean and imagining catastrophic consequences. Part of the exposure therapy will involve letting go of your safety behaviors. If you don't have a therapist, sit down and write out all of the things that you do to keep yourself from throwing up or becoming nauseous. Are there any rituals that you perform, like throwing things out before they expire, that you use to reassure yourself that you'll be okay. If you live with someone, that person may help you recognize some things that you do that are safety behaviors that you may not think of as safety behaviors. Another thing you can do is to make sure you're taking adequate magnesium. I talk in my magnesium video about how anxiety can make you urinate extra magnesium and become depleted. So making sure that your body is getting enough, you wanna increase your consumption of high magnesium containing foods and take magnesium supplements. The National Institute of Health website has a reference list of the magnesium content in certain foods and I have a link to that in the description. Magnesium supplements are generally safe but if you have other medical problems it's always a good idea to check with your doctor about any supplement that you want to add to make sure it doesn't conflict with another medication you're taking. Keep in mind what should be reasonable goals for your therapy or your self-help efforts. You won't get to the point where you welcome vomiting. You will probably always feel at least a twinge of disgust and angst at the thought or sight of it. But reasonable improvement is getting to where your fear or disgust doesn't cause intense distress. 
You're not having panic attacks because of it. You've dropped your safety behaviors and you allow yourself to take risks. If something does make you throw up, it doesn't set you back to ground zero. You accept that sometimes your anxiety will peak to the point of making you nauseous. But instead of running from it or freaking out over it, you turn to your calming tools to reduce your anxiety and let the distress pass through you. That means you have to develop calming tools that, that work for you so you can grab them, like grabbing a tool from a toolbox and using it when you need it. Knowing what tools works for you takes time. Another endpoint goal is that your vomiting fear doesn't interfere with your normal functioning. You're leaving your house. You're going to places where someone can be sick. You're having children if that applies to you. These are just some reasonable endpoint goals to strive toward. Here's the video on safety behaviors, and here's the one on magnesium. Have a great day. See you next time.